Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually replicate a Spotify uh, screenshot. Now, I was attempting to record this like basically the, to, this is my first time using Figma ever. And I had recorded a tutorial, but then I had the camera on and the frame rate just went horribly wrong and then I recorded a second time and I was getting an audio echo. This is my third time. Third time's a charm. Also the other videos were running around 30 minutes and I didn't even complete the entire layout and I was going pretty fast. So what I'm going to do is split this into a three-part series. So this is the screenshot we'll be working with. Um, I uploaded it to Imgur and I'll be posting the URL here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the text, the icons, the image, all this text, the controls. We're going to re replicate this exactly. Um, and bonus points if you can do these icons too, which we'll probably just import. So for the first part, we're just going to get the screen set up and then import the image. So to do this, you'll want to go to figma.com, so that's F-I-G-M-A.com, and you'll have a screen like this. You'll want to go through the creating an account process if you haven't done that already, but pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to create a brand new project or brand new page by clicking this plus icon. All right. So what we want to do is create what's called a frame, which is essentially just a screen. So we can go up here and click this hashtag looking thing, or you'll notice it says F right there. So that's a F, uh, hotkey we can press on the keyboard. So if I press F on the keyboard, it creates a, uh, it selects the frame for me. And over here on the right, it actually has some preset phone screen sizes. So I have a little old iPhone SE. Um, so I'm going to click that and it's going to create the exact dimensions. Okay, so how do I get that image into here? Well, what you'll want to do is go to the URL that I provide and then save this image by right clicking and choose save image as and then you're going to upload it back here. So to do that, you're gonna click this little arrow next to the square and go down to place image. And I think I called it Kelly, not JPEG. Nope, not that one, that one. Okay, so I'm going to choose that. And what I don't wanna do is click right here I'm actually going to just click right next to it and we're just going to do some side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get the right shade of gray and this is really really subtle. Most people might not even notice this but it's slightly lighter gray at the top than it is at the bottom and just because we're going to pay attention to detail we're going to get that effect. So the way that we can do that is by clicking on the frame itself and then right here it says fill. We're going to click that little square and then up here it says solid. So I'm going to click solid and change that to linear because solid means solid color. Linear means linear gradient. So you notice this bar shows up and it has a square at the top and a square at the bottom. So that's showing the beginning color of the gradient and the end color. So for the beginning color, I'm going to click that square and then you'll see this little icon. It's an eyedropper and that's the universal icon for if you ever want to basically pull a color from your screen. So you'll see there's this circle here, which is a close up of whatever this eyedropper is on top of. So I'm going to click the top here and it pulls that color into here. Now, one thing I want you to notice is 
as I put my cursor over here, look at this number here. Notice how it changes. So every color has its own code, which is called a hexadecimal color code. And every color has a code. So at the top, it's 282828, or my eyes are bad, 262626. If I go all the way to the bottom, you'll see, and now it says 151515. So these are two distinct grays. So I'm going to click that. Mm, oh, I sorry, I didn't switch squares. So I'm going to try this one more time. Sample the top. I need to select this square now. Click the eyedropper and then click the bottom. And whether or not you can see it, there's a very subtle gradient here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is import this image. But in your case, what you're going to do is pick your own album. Okay, so it can be any album. Even if you have a SoundCloud, you can make it, you know, fool your friends into thinking that you have a Spotify as well. So um, I already happened to download this album art, but I'm actually going to use a different album, uh, uh, which is just self-titled. So that's what the other album looks like. And so I already downloaded it. You'll want to find your album art, save it to your computer. And then we're going to click here, go back down to place image. And I called mine Kelly one. And there it is. So I'm going to open and I don't want to click right on this screen because then it's going to crop it. I actually just want to click outside here because it's massive. Okay. So I may need to zoom out to see this whole thing. So the way you zoom out is hold Z for zoom. And you notice it changes into a magnifying glass. And if I click, it's going to zoom in, but I want the opposite. So to zoom out, I'm going to keep Z held down, but then also hold Alt or Option. And now the plus turns into a minus. So if I click and zoom out, now I can see more. And if you want to be able to move around like this, like I'm using a multi-touch trackpad, but you can do it by pressing H for hand or clicking on this hand icon and dragging, and then that'll let you move your screen around easily if you don't have like a trackpad control. Okay, so you notice all these have blue outlines. That means these are both selected. I only want the picture to be selected. So I'm going to click off, then click here, and I want it to be the same size as this. So I'm going to hold the shift key. And what shift does is it makes it so that this doesn't get uh, cropped. So I'll show you what happens if I don't hold shift. If I just do this, that's what happens. Okay, so I don't want that to happen. I'm going to press command or control Z to undo that. I'm going to move this into place, but look, it's actually behind it. I need this to be in front of this so that I can get the size right. So to do that, you can right click and say, bring to front. So I'm clicking that. I'm going to drag it to here, hold shift and then drag that corner until they're the exact same size and boom. All right, so this image right here is going to be the basis for all the alignment. So you notice all this text and all these icons, they line up to that left edge and all these icons and text align up to that right edge. So that's why we need to place the image first here. So I'm going to click and drag over and notice how that red line shows up. That's telling me that it's perfectly centered. So I'm going to let go. And now I have a perfectly centered album art. So I'm going to end the video here. This is part one, getting that image placed, uh, creating a new document, and getting this dark background. So to save our progress, click on that menu icon, go to File, and I guess save.fig, but I think it automatically saves, so we should be good. So that's the end of this video. In the next video, 
we're going to add all the text elements. So stay tuned.